The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman, December the 10th, or December the 10th, the Friday, end of the week as well. And this is going to be very interesting because the Dow was up quite sharply. Uh, it comes out with, what, 6.8% uh, inflation. We're talking about uh, the market celebrating, woohoo, <laughs> and rallying sharply higher with the Dow went all the way to 35,951. Remember, I've been saying, for a little while now, the 35,800, 35,900 should see some kind of resistance. Uh, and that's going to actually be a test of strength. Meantime, back at the ranch, we've had since the December 1st low on the 200 period exponential moving average, we've had one, two, three, four, five, six. This is the seventh consecutive higher high, meaning this is what I call in the Chapman wave a floating letter. From here, it turned out to be leg A. Leg A, leg A, leg A, and today it's still leg A. Chances are that maybe Monday we get a peak A as there's some kind of a pullback uh, Sunday night into Monday. We'll see what happens. Uh, but this is quite extraordinary, a very sharp move, and it includes a gap. So that's very good, and it's helping the weekly chart to improve a lot. So as it stands right now, the Dow has gone from a, sell, from a buy signal to a buy mode because the stochastics over 80% and 83% the day's young. Probably I should wait until the end of the day before I say this. But so far, it looks like it could be uh, a buy, an upgrade to a buy mode. I, it's a daily chart. I have to wait for the close. And the Magdi's cross positive is still way down lower, but it's cross positive. The histogram has improved. It's gone positive. And you've got the nine period over the 14 period moving average. Good signs all around to suggest that the VIX index, and I've been talking about this all week, that the VIX index, that spiral to the upside um, right there at peak D, 35.32, I can now put a down arrow to say it's in a sell mode, the VIX index. Of course, that can change in a moment's notice, but the designation as of now says that the VIX index is in a sell mode on the daily chart. Uh, certainly, that could be the same in the week. We have to wait for Friday's close. Had a peak D as well in the Chapman Wave methodology for the weekly chart. Yeah, the other stochastics gone from 35.32, 15 points lower to 20.07. I would say that that is a pretty significant pullback. And therefore, I'm calling this a low of significance in the Dow and the S&P, but not the low. We don't know yet whether it's here. Now, I often talk about an internal low. And you have to wait for a residual low to get confirmation. Let's just say that this is something that's very important right now. When you're looking at the S&P, S&P is up. So the Dow is up 0.33, up 119 at 35,871. The S&P is up 0.55% at 20, up 25 at 4692. Uh, did it take out yesterday or today's Friday? Wednesday's high. Let me just check that out. It's trading right now at 46.92. The high on Wednesday was 47.05.06. And today's high is 47.05.38. We've started leg B. That's all we need to know. Leg B, that's very important. And I'm still calling it a gray leg B. Why? Because the stochastic is still only at 73%. It's, it's underneath 80%. And I can't give a buy, a, a buy. It's in a buy signal, but not a buy mode. So the buy signal says, yep, this is good. MACD is cross positive. The nine period moving average is over the 14. All of this is, is good action. There's no question about it. And just real quickly, while we're in the middle of uh, looking at charts, um, question about could I show the E-mini? Yeah, we made a peak D. In the E mini 10 minute chart at the high today of 4706.50, <clears throat> trading now at 4689.50, uh, 
that is still, if I believe, a leg A to the downside. And the 100, so, so the one minute chart, this is going to be very important as well. The one minute chart. Is now in a trading block, a rectangle formation. It did that earlier on. That's Look at this. The news comes out at 8.30. It pulls back, and then it readies. And it readies, readies, readies. Nice green, green line on the 9 p.m. moving average all the way to a peak E, and then it pulls back, and then it goes sideways. And a long period of sideways action tries to break out, can't, and then it breaks down. It goes lower, below the support level. It goes right to the 200 period moving average. It tries to use that as a springboard. Nah, can't do it, fails, pulls back. Again, goes over that, can't hold it, boop, pulls back. Again, we've just had in the one minute chart a, a rally to the upside, can't hold it, pulls back. And that's why I'm saying I believe, based on the Dow action, that we are looking at at least some kind of a shorter term uh, pullback today. Maybe we've just seen the high of the day. Uh, and that might, if based on the Dow action, let me just go back to the Dow to show you. This is a chart I show subscribers to my opening call every day. Um, it went, there was a left side, right side price time match going to, 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 Mar to Monday, actually. And that said that the high that was made right here at, right there. That was on the, on the 19th of uh, November, the high of 35,879 was a target in the number of bars from there to the downside to the number of bars using this as a plumb line, the actual December the first low as a plumb line to the rebound. And that rebound went today, the high was uh, 35,951. So it went a little bit above. It's in a leg F in the 120 minute chart, looking a little toppy there. So I'm suspecting that there will be a peak A maybe Monday. And it could be lost a day or two. And that's the big test. Do we start to make a strong leg B? Are we going to the all-time highs in this phase right now? Or was that it at least for three to five sessions where we pull back and then we have to make a decision? Was that that low, significant low? Or are we going back to retest sooner rather than later? That's it. Make it as simple as possible. Let's go back to our story. <laughs> we want to look at well, there's a lot to do, so let me just get on with this. So the weekly chart so far, this is a fabulous move back in the weekly chart to suggest that if we go above 47, 43.83 in the S&P, don't have to close, you just have to go above it. That would suggest that it's probably not leg G. G in weekly charts at tops usually have G slash C, and then you go to a D, and then we have to consider that's quite bullish, at least for December. But if we start to fail from here, and by Tuesday or Wednesday of this coming week, we're below 46.47, uh, which is only 23 points away from here. We just did 22 points up. So if we're underneath 46.47, that says, you know what, we can have a little bit more of a consolidation, and then, we may, then we have to make some decisions. Meantime, this is very selective. If you are looking at certain stocks that have held well, um, they should continue to hold quite well. Uh, it's, an, it's an important phase. The QQQ is just stuck here. I'm actually going to do this. Um, I'm going to show you something. I want you to just finish this. Yeah, that's A, B, C, D. Yeah, so we're just in a digestive phase in the 120 minute chart. The Qs are not leading, they're, they're actually just following. But they are up 0.65 today, uh, up 2.61, but at 396.41, they're lower. I'll be back. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE and you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, welcome back. So let's go on. This is Technical Friday. I want to show some of the technical things. Left side has a, a shoulder. Head in the middle. This is the QQQs, 408.71. Pulls back very sharp to 378. Rallies and then stalls where? At 400 and uh, twice. Uh, the 401 area and then 400.20. Yesterday. So... As I'm looking at this, I'm saying, all right, um, stalling's fine. Going sideways is fine. There's no problem. But the queues were the leaders. And that's what I've been saying. That's why I think that what we're looking at here is this rotational correction, meaning that the Dow, because of the makeup of the Dow, is very favorable right now. The S&P is less so. The QQs are less so. And if you look at the SMHs, which is the semiconductor ETF, holding really nicely and every time you think it's going to pull back sharply something comes up what was it yesterday a v g o uh, was that broadcom yeah look broadcom helps the semis uh broadcom inc used to be brcm of course now uh, for a long time it's been um a v g o that used to be the the kind that's the company that they took over so they're using that symbol and they're calling it broadcom and what we're looking at is it's up a little bit. It's up 10%. That's 644 round number right now. Uh, and it spiraled to a leg E in the daily chart, a G slash B in the weekly chart. And each time we get this, remember that just a week ago, we we're looking at uh, the, the, the semis looking really vulnerable. But out of the blue, you get, you get Marvell. That's it, Marvell, M-R-V-L, has a big spike to the upside. And look at this. It's held and held and held. Now it's pulling back a little bit. It had an all-time high three days ago of, uh, let's see, I think it was 90, wait a minute, what happened there? Uh, 93.85, looking for round numbers. No round numbers. <laughs> 93.85 is trading at 90.13 right now. So you can see that this has been, what we're, what we're looking at so far is that the rotation has also included the internals within each sector so that you had an advanced micro devices which was leading the pack with brilliance in every way and then at 164.46 all-time high to peak g it pulls back sharply and now it's 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 
up a dollar forty three, but it's forming the dreaded H pattern right here. So this is where we see the rotation that says leadership sometimes can start to stall, and then you get some other stocks that take over for a little bit longer. But as we're looking at it, more and more of the semiconductors are starting to show some kind of, uh, what's the, oh, NVIDIA. <laughs> How can you forget that? NVIDIA, same thing, a dreaded H pattern. It's fading to get out of its way in the falling axe formation with the uh, lower lows and much lower. Much lower highs are much lower lows, and it's struggling to break above. Can it do that? Of course it can, but so far it hasn't done that. So this is what I'm saying, that we're looking at leadership that is becoming more and more selective. That doesn't mean to say we can't go higher, but it does mean to say that it's it's starting to be a struggle in some areas. Let's jump to gold. Uh, gold at this particular point, yeah, I didn't do the IWM, I'll get there. Uh, gold is stuck, it's up uh, $6.1782, it's in the lower range. Uh, everyone's saying, not everyone, a lot of people are saying, oh, gold is getting ready for that big explosive roof to the upside. All I can say is, in the patterns we're following, this weekly chart with the Chapman Wave inside track support level, having popped below it a couple of times, says that, it's really important that gold does not take out the 1760, I think it was actually 1761, 1762 low of the 2nd of December. It must not close below that because if it does that, it says you've now created a huge resistance area in the uh, 1790s to the 1805 area. And until the, the gold actually starts to trade in the 1812 and higher range, uh, it's just stuck. It's not breaking down at all, but it's just not moving nicely. The S, the silver, silver is getting making lower lows and lower highs. It's up today a little bit, up 14 cents at 22.15. Uh, uh, you see this? The, the unbalanced volume is making a little V-shaped pattern, but it hasn't really produced a big move. That big move we would see uh, silver going to the 22.79 area. Now uh, we're also looking at uh, the weekly chart with an H pattern. And it says, gee, is that the best you can do? It's not failing, but it's really not producing anything that looks significant for at least at this time, unless there's a news-related event to, to spiral to the upside. Looking at high-grade copper, high-grade copper, same thing, just dull in the lower range. Let's put it together with wood, which was doing quite nicely. This is the uh, iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF, I like to tie the two together. It's acting a bit better, actually. And in fact, if you look at Timber and Forestry ETF and you put it together with the HGX, if you put it together with the HGX, come on, there it is. HGX has had a really nice move in the cup formation. And that's just telling, and that's one of the reasons why I can't get overly bearish here because as long as I'm seeing the home builders and Toll Brothers, of course, is a significant part of the Philadelphia Housing Sector Index, uh, which is trading in a nice cup formation. It's up uh, 4.61, up at 5.26. Um, this is a good sign. And if you look at Toll Brothers, made an all-time high yesterday. Uh, what, was the, what was that high? It was 74.31. And today it's uh, up. 76 to 73.48. It, it is a little extended, yes, but wow, this is really good action. It's nice to see. So it's great to see sectors doing well. If you look at the OIH, the OIH is holding okay. It's gone to a leg B. It's pulling back a little bit down a penny today, 193.48. But it has started a move that's suggesting only in <clears throat> the magnet of the 200 period moving average of 193. Uh, 0.48, uh, 0.50, uh, that the stochastic and MACD are rallying. The 9 hasn't gone above the 14, but it's attempting to do that. And this is what you want to see in a cup formation. You want to see it not break down to the left side low, but to stall somewhere above it and then start to see green candles. And that's it. Aha. Now you can maybe start to build some base to attempt to go uh, higher in the shorter term. And here we are in leg B. So the OIH. Uh, that's the oil service ETF doing okay, not great, it's just off the bottom. The way, the way you you like to see it, if it's had a sharp move down, and that's what we've been talking about in a number of stocks. Let's look at BIIB because we had the same pattern. Yeah, you see 
PIB, we were talking about this the other day. This is uh, Biogen Inc. And we said it was at the, around about 227. Said it's looking good, but it's a horrible chart pattern to look at because it needs to make a big, like a V-shaped power move to the upside. And now it's gone to a leg A and it's pulling back at 233. It went all the way to 230, almost 237. So, yes, it did what we were looking at in the very short term, a little nibble and then and maybe a little bit. But it needs this. I'm only talking patterns. Now. I'm not talking about Biogen. I'm talking about the pattern of the daily chart. So this, to make this a successful rally, you have to see this particular V-shaped pattern go right back to some of the ugly red candles on the left side. And that's like the 26th of November, 250 to 242. Next day is 245 to 235, lower lows and lower highs. You want to get into the body of that to make a successful V-shaped pattern. So far, it is done. I'll be back in a moment. That's the chapter of the lot of 5,101. It's a piece of 20. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. So we're looking at uh, the TLT, which is the 20th Treasury Bond Fund. And that is, where did I put it? It's over there. Okay. And that is, is up 45 cents. Let me just get this over and slide this across so you can see what I'm talking about. Hmm, seems to me there must be a lot of trading going on today because all of a sudden it went just a fraction, about a split second slow. Um, yeah, so uh, what we're looking at is that yields are stuck in a range. They aren't uh, doing much right now, <clears throat> but they're not breaking down. They're not breaking up just for the moment. And uh, that's important. 
because at this stage, you don't need anything to, to really upset the market. We've got enough with inflation. Now, what? Uh, so in the Dan, we've got to mention here that um, uh, I've been talking about the oldies becoming newies for quite some time. I said Microsoft morphed. It changed its, its whole character. It was in the, the explosion to the top back in 1999, 2000, the dot-com bubble. <clears throat> quite a few of those stocks. Uh, just got decimated, and now they back their leaders. And now you've got, you've even got something like uh, I was mentioning Cisco to subscribers. I was almost going to take it for the for for a burst to leg D. We didn't do that, but there it is. There's oh, what a fantastic oh, how upsetting is that? We've been discussing it all week, and now it's at uh, not a new. It's almost at an all-time high, uh, or at least a recovery high. Uh, it's in leg D uh, in the daily chart. 59.11 up dollar 56 and um, that's very important look it broke the the trend uh, right there this chap wave inside track repellent zone this is the old cisco 5g cybersecurity subscription transition i mean should i do that now yeah technical friday let's just do that look this is uh, cisco going back squeeze 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 here we go um there's my squeezer squeeze once twice three four five look at this oh i had that i renotated and everything and now i've lost that notation i believe that, that was a d i don't know whatever it was the all-time high was at 82.00 round number high all-time high for uh since march of 2000 and it's now december of 20 21 so for 21 years it has not made a new all-time high this is also split and i don't know how many times but that's the that's the high then you've got um mm -mm. sienna doing the same thing all time <laughs> this is embarrassing this is peak a peak b peak c peak d peak e and it goes to a top in uh, 2000, October of 2000, at 1057.00, it had a low of 588.00. But tell me, round numbers aren't important. So 1057.00 for Sienna and uh, Sienna Corporation, and it did have a little bit of a dip. The little dip of a the little bit of a dip went to sixteen dollars and eighty five cents in October. I would say that's a little bit of a dip, eleven dollars and sixty nine cents in August of two thousand and four, and that might have been it. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, I don't want to go through this so waste time. I just wanted to show you that some of the oldies are coming back. Did I do Microsoft? Microsoft, Microsoft, all time high. The eighty fifty three point ninety seven pre-split whatever it was high that was made back in <clears throat> 2000 i think that was 1999 or maybe it was january uh yeah 5338 so that high that was made in january of 2000 it it took it took until somewhere around 2016 16 years with a low of 14.87 back in 2009 <coughs> 14 years to start breaking this cup formation and now it's trading at 341.50. Isn't that amazing? Um, what was the other one we were looking at here? Oh, Oracle, O-R-C-L. Made an all-time high. I, I believe this is peak A. One of them went to a C. I don't know if this was one. Maybe this was an A, B. Hey, whatever it is, it made a high. Oracle made a high. I can't remember if this was pre split, but 46, 47, September of 2009, pulls back uh, to the low, around about 7 ish. That was back in 2002. And now it's trading at 100.94. Today it made an all time, uh, an all time high of 106.34. So, isn't that interesting? The old one, the oldies are becoming the newsy. And what are we looking at? We're looking at, wasn't there another one that I was missing? Um, let's just go. Article, I did article, did Sienna, uh, Broadcom, I did that, AVGA, e -A -V -G -O, but it's changed now because it was taken over. But yeah, it's different. It's a different company. Oh, Qualcomm, uh, QCOM, 
Look at that. You remember Qualcomm? Qualcomm made its all time high back in January of 100.00, round number high. It wasn't actually, it was split a number of times after that because they announced the split soon after the high was made. And hoo hoo hoo, it did come down. Well, I think it was a 500 and something. Anyway, so we're looking at uh, the high of January. Uh, and it also pulled back just a little bit. It went down to the uh, $12 area, $11 area back in 2002. And uh, now it's trading at 181.73, down 53 cents, having made an all-time high last month, but not so far this month. So it, it, this is really interesting. So you remember I spoke about uh, a whole long time ago. And a lot of people mentioned to me, oh, that's the end of uh, automobiles, gas automobiles uh, with electric, with the uh, the Prius. And I said, that was, what, 15, 16 years ago. I said, no, the infrastructure of everything you can look at, uh, photographer, you can look at anything you want at the turn of the century, the 1880s, engines, etc., uh, electricity. It took for the infrastructure 30 to 40 to 50 years for the infrastructure to, to develop. The same with oil and gas. So that says that it's going to take a long time before the majority of cars are electric. And um, it just in, in between, so many things can happen. I mean, we're talking about the grid, we're talking about the electric grid. There's a lot that has to happen. Is it good or bad? I have, I'm not making a qualitative judgment. I really, it's not my issue. Yeah, my issue only is that you can't extrapolate what's going on now and say, oh, yeah, and then just talk about it as if that's automatically going to be the future. The future is filled with surprises. Um, okay, enough with that. So the surprise here is that uh, two things are happening. One is, let me just get to this now. I want you to do this. If you're looking at wheat, dust wheat, um, you're looking at the A pattern that I talk about very often. It's also a head and shoulders pattern. It made a peak D, and I warned the other day. I said, oh, peak D, we might see, start to see a pullback in my DBA. That's what subscribers have from the 13s. It hit the uh, uh, 19, uh, 19 area just the other day. And I said, just be careful. So yeah, we are the that's the DB Agriculture uh, Fund. I had it all written down here. I'll show you something in a moment. So we made a peak D in the continuous contract at 87, uh, 876 and three quarters. And it's trading now today's low is 768. So the has this pattern. Look at this beautiful left shoulder, head, right shoulder, and it pulls back below the neckline. I hate the I hate head and shoulders pattern because by the time you recognize it, it's ready for a bounce. So what we're looking at is that's wheat. Let's look at soybeans. Soybeans made a peak. Come, come, come. There's a break coming up. I want to get you before the break. All right, I might miss it. Uh, it's trading at 12.67, up two and three quarters. It's right on the 200 period moving average. I'll be back. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. 
You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks, we're back. Just real quickly, um, yeah, that peak D that was made in the 10 minute chart, how important uh, is the 200 period moving average? Do you ever need it? Is it just a waste of time? Hey, you tell me. Look at the chart. Look how it was resistance and then it became support back at four o'clock this morning the, until six, until about, well, all the way to eight o'clock. And then, bam, we spiraled to the upside. Did you need the 200 period moving average at that point? Not at all. You didn't even need it at all. Wow comes to peak D and it plums down and what does it do it goes right to the 200 period moving average and now it's acting as support is it going to hold or is it going to break and is it going to become a resistance area you know my opinion is on the very short term I think uh, we're making some kind of a, a Dow daily potential top for a peak E going a peak A going into Monday so there should be some weakness um, still a excellent action overall, but a short term, be a little careful. All right, let's get back to our story here. And what we're looking at is, um, look, Juniper Networks uh, made a PD uh, back in July of 2015. Uh, actually, it was in November at 32.39. It pulls back. I drew this the other day. Peak C1, C2 is very important. We just saw the peak C1, C2, C3 in the uh, one minute chart right here in the how important is that and it shows you right here look uh, I just what didn't have time I think it might even have made a D so that high was in the futures 46.99.25 and this one I think was 25 cents higher uh, 46.99.25 no it's exactly the same so you made a peak C1 C2 C3 it acts as if it's a peak D and you can use that for a, a pullback and that's exactly what happened so that's in the one minute chart. So look at this peak C1, C2 in Juniper Network, uh, the high of November of 2015. And I chose when I was doing my study of, of this over the last uh, three weeks or so to say, hey, I bet there's a left side, right side price time match to this high that was made at peak C2. This is the monthly. Uh, this is the month of November of 2018. And it could go to November or December, but I actually have it going to, let me just click it to see where the dots are, right on November, November of uh, uh, 2021, when it went to December. But isn't that a nice technique? Left side, right side, price time match, you're going to know where to match. Sometimes it's the exact bottom of a cup or the top of an arch. Other times you've got to use a particular chart, which I discuss. Uh, for subscribers and we've had workshops on this and isn't that interesting so juniper networks fabulous now this isn't like cisco and all the others um in other this is a, a network it has it, it it has a different prescription it has a different uh, uh economic structure and a business structure so it made a, a 3239 high it has a different pattern if you go back all the way 
to the, as a monthly chart, looking at it going back to 2011, the high was right there at a peak D. How important is the fourth highest peak in the Chapman wave? You can see right here, uh, March of two March of 2011 hits a high of 45.01, just missed the round number high, and it drops very sharply down to the 14 area. Right here, it goes to 14.01. Uh, in July, on uh, the monthly chart, July of 2012, and it's been rallying since it did have a high of 32.39 and dropped to 32. Uh, to 15.20, and now it's acting well. And this is telling you that this whole network struck infrastructure right now. I wouldn't be surprised if they are benefiting in many ways from uh, the the bills that are being passed. We'll see what happens. But in the meantime, I'm saying short term, just be really careful. I think we're we're under pressure here. Um, I can see some kind of a pullback, maybe a couple of days. Uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, and this is not Juniper I'm talking about. I'm talking about generally. Uh, now, a couple of questions. Yes. Oh, Sintas rebounding. Yep, that was on my list today. I said, do we play uh, Sintas um, for another move to an all-time high? Do we play, um, what did I say here? Uh, what did I write for my subscribers? I said, yeah, we've got, I'm not putting on any new positions unless there's a very sharp decline. That's, that's something we wanted to buy. But Cisco to leg D, question mark. Sintas double top, quest or breakout, question mark. PSTG to leg uh, D. PSTG, this is in the, uh, this is storage. Yep, this is at a peak C. Pulling back today, I think it still has a good chance to go to a new all-time high above the high it was made at peak C to go to the 34 area. It's at 32.29. So I had a question about A, which is Agile and Technology. It's one of our stocks that we've had for a long time. Uh, we've had it for since 70, uh, since uh, over a year ago. Uh, it's in spectacular moves. We've taken quite a bit off. We've got a core position. It hit 165.68 just recently. Its all-time high was 179.57. So uh, as it stands right now, the question is, is this starting to act like something we should add to? Uh, qu two questions. One was to add to, and for some people who don't have it, is this something to buy? I'm watching it closely. It's in an area. Look at this weekly chart, the dreaded H pattern. I'm just going to hold off. I, I don't see any need to rush into anything right now. Um, the other thing is TMO, another one that we've got, Thermo Fisher Scientific. This is acting a lot better. I'd say I would prefer Thermo Fisher TMO over A for a trade. But even there, this is a potential leg A to the upside. It could make that dreaded H pattern that we always talk about. So it's technical Friday. Let me show you what the dreaded H is. The dreaded H is where, the, where you come down sharply and start to make a rebound. And that rebound, so this is what it looks like. You come down, 666.65 was the all-time high. We're long from the 484 area, very nice gain. Um, we're taking a little bit off. we still got a big core position. And it pulls back, hits the 50-period moving average, and then rallies. But look what happens. It comes straight down, and then it arches over. The arching over says, just be real careful, because if um, at a, the first or second high after in the recovery high if that starts to fail and arches over takes out that left side low that can be quite significant so all i'm saying is i'm watching it closely because if there is a move above today's high 644.78 if there is a close above 647 i would say you know what now we're making the v-shaped pattern we're going to go to the top to test the 666.65 level so i just wanted to show you talking about chart patterns and questions i have uh we have a question from sharky uh <clears throat> we have a question from sharky uh where hello oh you're there hi how are you hi how are you i'm good so you got a question well you know i it's kind of like a okay. So uh, rig, I've been watching rig and stuff, and um, you know I've been doing some research and stuff with the um, you know the backup still in the LA port and and the supply chain stuff, and it doesn't seem like that's gotten really much better. I mean, I really haven't seen gas prices go down, even though strategic reserves were released, you know, and the president had said that. So so right. where, where do we go from here with these? 
Yeah, I, I wanted your take on, on this inflation number that came out today and going forward. And, you know, there was some talking heads on Bloomberg News that said that we're really not at the top of inflation. It'll be around, you know, okay. even so going let, in the second quarter. But the, anyhow. Let me get to that in a moment if you want to hold on. So, folks, we've got a, a break coming up. Then we'll have the final segment. And there's a bunch of things to talk about. And uh, oh, I didn't finish uh, the... Uh... Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. So in this segment, uh, uh, Sharky, this is what I'm going to say. Uh, there are a bunch of things that I'm going to talk about, and I'll tell you what, what I'm thinking and what I'm looking at, just to, to cover your question. So uh, what we're looking at is within, look, if you look at wheat, I just mentioned wheat. Wheat made an all-time high, now it's pulling back. Soybeans uh, is holding really well, stuck at the 200 period moving average at the lower end, but it is starting to make higher highs and higher lows. Corn, very important for the products that we eat, right, corn? at the most important recovery highs in a rectangle formation going from the top to the bottom. Crude oil had a big, big rally and all the way to 85 back in October, slumps down to the 62, 61 area, and that's trading at 71, 61. It looks like crude is trying to get back to stay in a, in a trading band, but within a range, and that range goes to about 76, 77, with support at 67. So when I'm looking at, at all these different things, I had a question in the Tiger, uh, Tiger TV about ASS, ASX. ASX is an Australian company in energy, ASE uh, Industrial Holdings. Makes a high, and now it's pulling back from a peak F 
which says that if we're pulling back, if you look at the XLE, which is, let's call it the comparable thing, stuck in a range, but none of them are breaking down or breaking out. So I think we just got to get used to this inflation. You think the market will get used to it. It'll, it'll price in all these variants. But at the same time, I think you've got to be very selective. And you look at looking at, we went through this yesterday, you, if you're looking at the uh, defensive stocks like a General Mills, GIS, trading almost at a high, it's saying that there are things that are happening here that you've got to take into account for the next six to eight weeks, and that has to include the inflation aspect. I hope that helps you. Yep, thank you very much. You have a great weekend. You too. Thank you very much for calling. So, folks, stay tuned. You've got Mary Pesmente coming up. Great programming in the day. I'll put the news, and then I'm out of here. So, uh, give me a second. Dow's up uh, 42. SP's up 15. Come back to one of the game. Back to you.